everybody singing about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Don't you know he took off and left me, left me, left me. So he wouldn't have to look at the faces of all this shit who go around screaming. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Everybody's singing about Jesus. Jesus. You know, I looked down at that child as I baptized him. Come on, sit down. And all kinds of warm feelings tingled through my body and through my mind. Thoughts of my own childhood. You know that youth is a gift of God, too. But it's not a gift that's supposed to last forever. The memory should last, but not the childhood. Not biologically or mentally. We have got to grow to maturity, to responsibility, to leadership. But we live in a land where maturity, the responsibilities of adulthood are not stressed. No. Mm-mm. <laughs> we bow to youth, childishness, frivolity. Why be gray, dependable, when you can dye your hair, abandon your responsibilities, buy more toys, play more games? teaching today, wasn't it? All right. Kathleen, did you hear today's sermon? Oh, it was interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> Look, I don't want to be a goddamn undertaker, okay? Woodrow, you know better than to take the Lord's name in vain in front of his very own house. Woody doesn't care if he burns in hell. You're messing with the Lord here. No, you're the one messing with the Lord here. You know, you got no problem bringing up the name of God as long as it's to scare people. You two, you both have a way of making Sunday unbearable. Woody! Where are you going? To get the car. Is everything OK? Oh, everything's fine. Heaven God. Maggie. Reverend Potts, I need to talk to you about a situation. What do you think about condoms? Condoms. Mm -hmm. Are we talking in general, spiritually, or personally? We're talking teenage daughter. <laughs> Sheila? Yes. That's right. Hey, Reverend. You're looking very lovely, Sheila. Thanks. You're looking kind of fine yourself. Well, it's come to this, Reverend Potts. Sheila is carrying condoms around in her purse. Now, I have nothing against the use of condoms in the right circumstances. But Sheila's only 16. Now, she's a good student and all. I'll give her that. You know that I'm a strong advocate of sex only after marriage. And when I counsel teenagers, I make it very clear. But we have to look at the reality of the times, Maggie. With teenage pregnancies and worse, all these diseases, AIDS and all. But I don't think 16-year-olds can deal with, you know, all those emotions having to do with sex and carrying condoms around so they can give in to every little itch just don't seem right to me. I'll agree with you, Maggie. It shouldn't happen. But if it does, I do approve of protection at any age. And frankly, I'm glad to see that Sheila's wise enough to, to know better. We can't be with our children 24 hours a day, Maggie. Excuse me, Reverend Potts. I'm sorry, Maggie. I'm so sorry. Sister Hazel wants to know who I was going to the conference to. Please excuse me, Maggie, will you? And if you like, we can um, continue this in family counseling during the week. You're losing it bad. You know what tells me? I see it in your bitch eyes. Hey, this looks 
looks pretty good. Oh, yeah. We're really working on it. Hey, Dad. Hi. Hi, baby. How you doing? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm okay. Yeah? I'm okay. okay. How you doing, Mr. Carver? Why is everybody bringing me fruit? Because it makes you healthy, Daddy. <laughs> well, I should be the healthiest man in St. Paul. Give me that. <laughs> Put it over there somewhere. I told you flowers would have been better. Boy, you better not have brought flowers in here. Then I know I have one foot in the grave. Yeah, that's what flowers mean to me, death. You know, that's why I've never given you or your mother flowers, Kathy, because it reminds me of what I see all day long at the funeral parlor. I know, Dad. What? What's up? I don't want no flowers at my funeral. Dad, there's not going to be any funeral. Well, I hope not, but I'm just telling you. What's the matter with you, Woodrow? <laughs> Nothing, Mr. Coleman. A uh, stink or something? Oh, no, no, <laughs> not at all. Hey. Because I was bathed no more than 15 minutes before you came in here. By the finest lips in the hospital. Hmm. Oh, yeah, no girl. Can't be no more than 20. Always trying to bathe me, man. I know I'm old enough to be her grandfather, but I think she dig me, man. <laughs> oh, great. I'm oh, serious. Great. Oh, I hear you, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and don't you go telling your mother. <laughs> you know, when my little girl came to me and asked me for some money to send this young Vietnam vet to the best drug rehabilitation center in the country. I did it because, well, being an only child and all, we spoiled Kathleen. And I don't see anything wrong in that. More black kids should be spoiled. But outside of me and her mother, I've never really seen Kathy overextend herself for anybody. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and I've never regretted giving her that money. You're my son. Woodrow, I want you to continue my business. I want you to pass it on to those grandkids I've been waiting on. Excuse me. Hi, Mr. Coleman. Time for your medicine. Now, I'm afraid that I'm going to have to ask you to roll over. Will you excuse us, please? You think about it, son. Daddy doesn't even look that sick. You know, I don't understand this. He really loves you. He, he, um, he even called you his son. He's handing everything over to you, everything he's ever worked for. Everything. Well, we're gonna have to talk about that. Talk about what? Kathleen, uh, I have my own dreams. I mean, this funeral parlor stuff, it, it just ain't me, that's all It I'm ain't saying. you. Let me explain something, Woody, all right? See, everything that you are right now, up until this point, is largely due to my father. I know this. All right, then don't tell me what you are and what you're not. Kathleen, let me explain. Woody. My father has the right to die knowing that me and my children are going to be all right. Now, you owe him that. You at least owe him that. I don't want to hate flowers.
Reverend Fart Sermon was that moving. Oh, what's the matter, lady? Did you know that your son hates me? What? Since he was six years old. Never once has he called me mother. Uh. But that don't mean he hates you. Yolanda and Rolanda have always called you daddy, but Woody, Woody has never accepted me as his mother. You're the only mother he's ever known. He stood in front of the church today and said I made Sunday's unbearable for him. Oh, my God. You know good and well what Woody didn't mean that. He loves you. And then there's Sheila. She don't have no kind of respect for me. Maggie. She's just a kid. I know. And I'm scared now, Jake. I talked to Reverend Potts today. And even he was against me and then. This woman outside the church said I was losing it. She said I had bitch eyes. Do I have bitch eyes? Well, what is she talking about, bitch eyes? You, you got the softest, prettiest eyes I ever seen on a woman. I ain't losing nothing. Everybody in the family loves you to pieces. I don't know what I would do if something happened to you. That's the way you feel. Mm-hmm. <laughs>